Hi guys and welcome back. And today we get on with painting the out of the box panther. And of course this is part of the buddy build I'm doing with our good friend Steve Mottram. So we're off and running and I just wanted to get a base coat over the base coat if that makes sense. And uh, sort of go for that rust proofing because when I do the chipping later on, and look I know it's not the right colour but uh, it will suffice. Uh, when I do the chipping later on, I want to actually be peeling off the top layers of the paint so it looks a little bit more like actual chips and just dabbing uh, some dark paint on to represent chips. So this is my first go using the uh, Hataka paints. Uh, so they're water-based, they are quick-drying, They've got a little ball in the um, dripper bottle, which I think is always a good thing. This is A250 Dunkelgelb RAL840R. First look, I was pretty impressed. Went down very nicely and um, seemed to go through the airbrush quite well. That says the paint's optimised for the airbrush, so at first blush, I think uh, not too bad. And here I'm just putting some uh, highlights on with the Vallejo model air Dunkelgeld RAL7028 uh, which they call dark yellow. Very subtle, doesn't really come out well in the filming but uh, looked better in real life but as you'll see later on when I put the rest of the camera on it was a rather pointless exercise in the finish. So laying the brown down now on the wheels, and as you can see, I initially attempted to do this freehand. And one of the things I did discover was that uh, the paint gives you a fair amount of overspray, and it was very hard to control. Lowest pressure, messed around with distances, all that sort of stuff. And realized at this point that uh, I was going to have to mask to do the major camouflage. And I thought that I could probably recover the wheels with a little bit of careful masking after the brown had gone down. And so appropriately masked up with some silly putty, and we'll go into that a little bit further on uh, in the video. Tried to do the recovery with the green, and look, I got a few weird sort of sharp angles, but overall, and look, there's going to be a ton of mud on this tank once the die is um, put together, so wasn't too distressed. I think it'll give the overall look of uh, what uh, it should be. So one would to represent the rubber on the wheels, and I've done them two ways. One was a bit of an experiment. The first one I just used Vallejo model colour black, and that uh, always works well. I find it goes on really easy, and if you're careful and you have a little cotton bud handy, you pretty much get away with it without needing to mask.
And the second way I did it was with a big market fine point permanent marker. And this is tuxedo black, so a very formal marker as well. And that was actually really easy as well. And look, when I compared the two, and once I've got model over them, uh, I doubt you could tell one from the other. This was super easy to do, so I think this might be my preferred method moving forward. So typically I'll use the Tamiya Extra Thin for most of the plastic gluing. But for the wheels, I um, still use the Revell Contactor Professional. And the main reason for that is it's a little bit slower to go off and dry. And it gives you enough time, or I find it gives me enough time to do the adjustment to the wheels to make sure they're all lined up and uh, square and level and even and the like. So yeah, just a little tip. If you feel you need a little bit more time, the Revell glue will give it to you. Now getting on with putting the uh, rubber band tracks on and sometimes this can be challenging if you glue all the wheels in place and what I like to do is leave the drive sprocket off and then sort of fix that into the track first and then drape it over and stretch it a little bit but you don't have to stretch it as far as if everything was permanently cemented in place. Seems to work quite well, give it a go if you've had trouble stretching the tracks over your wheels in the past. Now I like being able to um, screw the tank down into the diorama base because I think it helps to give that impression of heaviness as it pushes the tracks right into the diorama base. And this one in particular because it's going to be super muddy and I wanted to be able to do the large amount of the mud weathering with both tanks in place. So just getting all set up for that ready with uh, the actual little bolts glued into place and uh, ready to receive the tanks later on. So on to painting the main camouflage and to do this I've used Silly Putty to mask out the areas that I don't want paint to go on. So as you can see the Silly Putty spreads quite a bit when it settles. I let it do that and then I roll it out into flat strips which doesn't necessarily always work as it does in my mind but uh, it's just a matter of persevering getting it down where you want it to go down uh, to the best of your ability and trying to use perhaps a little sculpting tool to keep some smooth lines so it doesn't get too sort of ragged or jagged. So you guys can see what's going on here, I'm spraying in the green and then later I'll put a bit more silly putty on and spray in the brown. Uh, come back when I can show you a couple of the errors that I made and uh, just a little bit of repair work to move on to the next stage. One thing I do have to say about the Hataka paints during this stage was that whilst it seemed to work alright for the wheels, uh, doing the larger areas uh, it just didn't flow very well and it was an absolute nightmare to thin because it didn't take very much at all. I might normally go with a 50-50 mix or a 30-70 mix of thinners to paint but uh, it was hard to get a, a balance with this. It, was either, it either made no difference or one extra drop and it suddenly became super thin and uncontrollable so I have a big question mark over these paints for me with my equipment maybe they're not the best thing.
Now this is a strangely satisfying experience, don't ask me why, but I quite enjoy peeling off the silly putty to see what uh, results have been achieved. Now I wasn't deliriously happy and it's really I guess a subjective thing but I thought there should have been a little bit more of the Dunkel girl coming down that side and I thought there was a little bit too much of it and it looked a little bit odd along the front of the tank as well so altogether I thought the Dunkel girl uh, was a little bit too wide in places compared to what I'd done with the brown and the green uh, especially up the top there it sort of was a little bit too much just uh, from a scale perspective and from just a consistency perspective so it bothered me a little bit and as I went through it I just realized too that there was a, a couple of ends that didn't really go wherever they needed to go now, I haven't done the back I'll sort that out um, when I do the repair work on, on the sides and that so So I whacked a little bit more silly putty on and then just did some repair spray work to narrow the dunkel gelb and uh, try and get a little bit more consistency of lines across the vehicle. And as you can see there's a few errors there where I haven't quite got the silly putty lined up and have left little gaps and uh, that uh, doesn't really bother me too much because I can just go in with the paintbrush and in fact that's what I did. I went in with the paintbrush and tidied all those up. And in places like this I just used a little bit of white spirit, painted that on, just let it soften a little bit and then cleaned off the surface paint and then came back in with the required colour. This also proved to be a good but unintended test of my um, planned chipping process for later on. So on with painting the turret and I had to be careful that I matched up the lines in a sort of neutral position because uh, when the turret moves the lines shouldn't match up so I didn't want to have it posed in its final position and have all the camouflage matching. And I just put down some, um, well we call it glad wrap here but clear film over the lower hole so it uh, was all protected. I was really happy with the way that turned out and that the camouflage patterns actually matched very closely from the turret to the uphole. So uh, yeah, pretty pleased with myself there. So you can see there that I've already painted all of the tools and bits and bobs around the sides. Uh, that wasn't very interesting and because I'm blind I have to get so close, very hard to film. So the next step for me is to go around doing some highlighting with the graphite pencils. So I just use Faber-Castell Artist graphite pencils and there's five different colours. It ranges from HB, 2B, 4B, 6B and 8B and they get progressively darker as you go along. So I just sort of use a random mixture of those, conscious of the fact that there'll be filters going over them later on. So it might look a bit too shiny right now, but it'll come back down uh, as will the paintwork when I get the filters on. And here we are just putting a little bit of rust on the exhaust. So I use a box set Life Color Rust and Dust. And for this I typically use the rust based color, which is a darker color. Then go on with a light shadow number one and then finish off with a light shadow number two. Usually seems to work, so I think this came out all right as well. Thank you. 
and the glass in the vision blocks I did with Hobby Color Clear Blue H93 Mr. Hobby. I find this to be a little bit darker than the Tamiya equivalent clear blue, but again, very subjective, it's just a matter of taste. The decals are not extensive, typical Tamiya, uh, reasonably good quality. I had to cut the numbers up individually because it comes as a uh, 221 and I've got two tanks and I'm not going to get any aftermarket decals for the pimped version. So I needed them, one will be 212, which is this one, and the other one will be 221. Not a lot to do, a few of the crosses on either side and the back, uh, and just the numbers. So put down a little bit of Microscale Industries Microset, and then finish that off once they're on with some Microsol just to help them settle down. The one at the back was a little bit troublesome, the second two over the hatch door, but uh, look, they settled down all right. There was a bit of an issue with the carrier film, on, especially on the Dunkle Girl background, it was quite obvious. But uh, all I really did was go back in there with a little bit of um, Microsol later on and uh, gently rub that away and uh, it rubbed away quite nicely. And then it was on with the chipping and again, normal for me, I just do a little bit of rough scratching with the end of my X-Acto blade just to break the surface. And for various reasons I decided I'd try the Microsol because I thought it worked really well when I was getting the carrier film off and it did actually take a little bit of the surface paint off but it was quite gentle. So used some Microsol where I'd done the scratches and then came back in with a combination of a, a Q-tip or a cotton bud or whatever they're called and sometimes with the actual X-Acto blade itself if it was a bit stubborn. Truth be told I think I overdid the chipping. I became enamored with my own process and uh, when I sit back and look at it now, I think it's too much, but I think the mud will cover up some of it and uh, hopefully it will look alright and there'll be, a, there'll be snow and ice and what have you, so I don't think it'll look too bad, but uh, trap for young players, don't get overexcited when you're doing a particular stage. The black wash filter mainly designed to bring everything down so it's a bit bright and shiny uh, across the board and it's very diluted so it's two drops of Vallejo black to 20 drops of water so it's quite diluted and uh, then I will go back in and wash it off again with some clean water as well if I think it's too heavy in places. the trackside base with Vallejo acrylic metal colour and then just before it is dry then I go in with some of the rust paints, the life colour rust paints and sort of mix them all together and occasionally might drop in a little bit of green as well. There's no science to this, I just poke it around until I sort of get something that I'm happy with and uh, that looks natural. And just here you can see I'm just scraping off the paint for the brackets where the tracks will go just so it gets a better bond when the extra thin hits both sides. There's also no reason that I put the spare tracks on and the toe chains on after I did the black wash. Uh, well, other than that I forgot to put them on before the black wash. And finally, just the second filter, and the last thing I do before I'll seal it with a gloss coat, which is to make another very weak wash of the Vallejo model colour Flat Earth, RAL8008, or it could be 70.983. It's very confusing. Anyway, same methodology, two drops of paint to 20 drops of water, 
splash it around and then come back in with some clean water to wash it off and try and get some nice little streaking patterns where it's going on the vertical and that's pretty much it so I don't think you need to see me spray gloss paint all over the tank I'm not sure that's all that exciting so the next thing we'll look at is a spin around on the magic spinning wheel and then a few stills in close-up and then I will come back to say goodbye I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of my subscribers. About a week and a half ago, I clicked over to the 2,000 subscriber mark, which is simply staggering to me, and just wanted to express how grateful I am and uh, my thanks to you all. It does really motivate me and keep me going to make the videos in particular, and uh, as you would have gathered, I really look forward to your comments and feedback, and that, uh, that does help me keep striving to make videos and hopefully um, improve on them every time. And as we all know with YouTube, not too many people watch right to the very end. So this is a sign of a uh, loyal, a dedicated subscriber. If you're listening to this at the 2500 subscriber mark, I will have a giveaway. But uh, rather than do the typical uh, announcement video and then whoever comments goes in the draw, I'm going to steal an idea from Steve Mottram. So I acknowledge it was his idea. And instead of doing that, I will simply at 2500 announce the winner of the draw and you'll be in the draw if you are a regular commenter so i'm not looking for new subscribers through this it's not of any interest to me at all uh, it's just a recognition of the guys who have been with me some of you from day one and uh, just how much i do appreciate it so watch out for that if we believe at google analytics it's about four months away so we'll see how accurate their predictions are Otherwise, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like if you like, sub if you're not already. And of course, as you might have gathered, look forward to your comments and I will answer all of them. So have a great day and take care. I will catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Take the time to check out Steve's channel as well. He's a great modeler and he's also quite a hottie.